Hello, welcome, and beautiful day today. Thank you for joining. As usual, we got tunes today. <laughs> hey, Gonzo, thank you so much for the sound check. Let's go ahead and check that off. And also, uh, hey, Detail Devil, good morning. Thank you for joining. I'm so glad you're here. Gonzo as well, I'm so glad you're here. Apologize about the no sound last week during the uh, the Let's Play session we did. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we're good on sound today. Um, on that note, <clears throat> on the agenda, finally, the long-promised prom chat overlay. It's coming. More on that later. Audio on my gaming rig. Yes, more on that later. Uh, gameplay streaming more often. More on that later also. Hey, Herdrex, good day. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for hopping in. Uh, also on the agenda today, going to be looking at uh, progress on the latest release of the website and all the work that we've put into it, uh, including some new stuff, new revelations. Uh, hey, Sector, so glad you're here. Good day to you. Uh, and yeah, also we have the, uh, also on the agenda, there's a slight modification I'm doing uh, of Zester's Clouds. Uh, Sophie had the idea to tone down the uh, cloud density at nighttime, and so maybe we'll, should be a simple change, maybe we'll do that later today. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, then at the recommendation of Gonzo and Herdrex, I thought we might do a first look at Some Enchanted Evening, which is a mod I've been working on for a minute, and I might do uh, like a little dungeon building session, you know, with OpenMWCS. So, uh, whoops. Yes, <laughs> Detail Devil, thank you, yes. Uh... So the plan is then, further to that, um, hey, Sten, good day. So glad you're here, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, so on the agenda, as I said, uh, chat overlay, audio on my gaming rig, gameplay streaming more often. These, strings, these three things are all interrelated. And basically, uh, later on today, plan on uh, moving my gaming PC permanently into my office space, which is where you see me standing here every week. And... Uh, you know, we'll we'll rig that up properly and then do a couple sound tests um, with some folks later on today and just make sure that I get the audio set up. Um, <clears throat> you know, I use Linux, if you didn't know, and audio is a little different uh, than I think what folks are used to with Windows. So, um, silly me, I thought I could just plug in my interface and it would just work the way it does on my laptop, but here we go. So, anyways, we'll be uh, taking care of that, hopefully, as a group effort. Uh, Gonzo, Herdrex, myself, and... Uh, Excuse me, and hopefully we'll resolve that. And uh, yeah, as I said, I was thinking about possibly having Sunday be, you know, Saturday will be like our website hacking day. And uh, Sunday could be the, you know, let's play the game day and let's look at cool stuff day. You know, maybe we'll like build something on Saturday, play it on or add something on Saturday, play it on Sunday, that kind of a thing. Um, so, and I'm glad to know that those sessions are welcome. Thank you, Detail Devil. Hey, Smallio. Yeah, I know you're a fan of that. So yeah, and... Uh, Moving on then, I, we check these off. Not really much more to say about those, but uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the thank you for the input sector. I really appreciate that. And yeah, I figure you know could be a good uh, could be could be a good balance. So <clears throat> moving on into the work uh, that we're doing for the CFG generator refactor. Um, actually, Brother Gonzo had a good point about the fact that uh, uh, let's go here. So on the CFG generator, first off, let's go ahead and just. Uh, Let's set a custom folder path as you as you will be doing in the future. And you'll notice this new section here. Set your Morrowind data files folder path. And that would be basically the thing that Gonzo pointed out that we needed because by default, I do something kind of funny um, where I, I put, you know, I just put the Morrowind install into some arbitrary folder. Um, and it doesn't really make sense for folks, right? Like maybe you got it installed with Steam, so you got some Steam path, or maybe, you know, it's in like C games, or maybe you got a whatever. It's not going to be this folder, probably. Chances are. So, um, to that end, we have the in progress, as you noted, probably, little uh, place here where you can put, you know, whatever. Uh... And it has to actually be, you know, the place where your data files is. <clears throat> the website has no way of knowing if that's actually the place, so you got to get it right. I would recommend, like, just 
opening up your folder. So this is my path here. Um, you know, just open up your file manager and copy it, pasted it in there, you know, like just like that. Um, doesn't quite work yet though. So uh, actually, when we look at this right here, this is the JavaScript. It's uh, purely JavaScript driven. Um, on the back end, what we have here, um, if we look at the CFG generator, used to be just like a big, this thing right here, used to be just like a big block of text. And uh, and by that I mean like you have an HTML code element that contains just a big block of text. But what I've had to do is actually like split it up a little bit more. Um, it occurred to me while I was preparing for the stream that I could retain the big block of text pattern. Um, so I don't know, let's look at that and see what we could do here. This is what I have in progress. I was working on it with my coffee this morning. So this is, uh, I just woke up and I'm having coffee JavaScript. Enjoy. And uh, so the code is very, very similar to what I wrote for your custom folder path, except for it. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, this is the folder path. And what we're doing here, woo, wake up Johnny. What we're doing here is we're telling that code, which was fairly naive before. Um, we're telling it, okay, now when you're looking at this chunk of text here, you actually don't want to adjust this one, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, because this code simply swaps out the first part of the path and everything else is the same. For the mods, maybe <clears throat> maybe you reasonably want that. But for Morrowind, this doesn't really make sense. Um, hey, Yafane, good day. Yeah, we got sound. <laughs> Apologies about that. Um, I mentioned just previously, though, we're working on that tonight. So, uh, And also strong possibility of regular gaming streams on Sundays, I think is going to be the plan. So yeah, we're just looking at some JavaScript I wrote for the uh, omitting my goofy path here for um, Morrowind data files. So let's see what I was doing here. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if we're looking at the uh, data paths code, that would be this thing right here. And actually, we don't want to look at this version. We want to look at this one. I'm going to go ahead and put an obscenely short path here. I'm going to open up the handy dandy Firefox debugging tool. Because we're going to need to see what this thing says. Look at that, it's already blowing up. All right. <clears throat> 82. What did I do? Mm -hmm, okay. See what happens. It's happy so far. Okay. Load up the preset. Okay. I was playing around with the regex. That's what this is here. I was thinking I could use some like regex voodoo to replace all except the first one. Believe it or not, that's not trivial and it didn't work. Hence this approach. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is where, um, this is where we're, I left off, but I do wonder if instead of like, um, so what I did here was instead of one block of text, I said, okay, instead of a block of text, we're just going to put a code element inside the code element and then like layer them a bunch. And as you can see here, there's an awkward gap and that is uh, padding. Come on. Here we go. Whoops. It's a, uh, there's a little, little bit of padding. Right. And so my plan was, okay, we'll stick a class on those. We'll set padding to zero and it'll look normal and that'll work. But I do wonder actually, um, if we can keep this like element insertion shenanigans, if we can just like get rid of that and actually have like a new string, that's a big block and just use that. I think I would like that better. Um, I don't know if it would be more performant, but I don't know. Um, thinking about it right now, I'm going to have a sip of my water and ponder for a moment which way I'm going to go. It's mostly done here. And as you can see, <clears throat> my super obscenely short folder path not inserted onto here. And so the next thing we would do when I decide what I'm going to do either way with this is we'll write the JavaScript, which will be this one right here, which will be a bit more simple. We're just looking at the, you know, replacing this specific thing 
We don't have to dive deep into the string at all. We can just brute force it. And that will be... Looks like it's actually already written, so I just have to plug it in. I should do that now. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. It's not going to do anything at the moment because, well, actually, maybe it'll just work. Are we going to have a Todd moment here, folks? It just works. Uh, whoa, if I click the right button. Hold up. All right. Okay, nothing happened. Huh. Oh. That looks bad. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see here. What file was it complaining about here? MWDIR. Const storage key. Oh, I see. Yeah, because this is a top level. Oh, interesting. All right. Um, you know, that's really interesting. I should probably scope these into the function. Since I'm not using, like, a JavaScript framework that's going to handle, you know, namespacing things properly. It didn't even occur to me until everything broke just now. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go ahead and just... Yeah, my, my, uh, this here was from me trying to dabble in regexing it away. Not going to happen. That's definitely not going to happen. And actually, let's go ahead and nuke that change. <clears throat> I mean, it's a neat idea, right? If I could have, like, used some regex magic that nobody wants to lay eyes on. Could have been cool. I'm happy with abandoning that approach. Thank you, Emacs. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Afane says, you're not allowed to have globals because of name co name collisions. Yeah, I mean, I totally could do them, but I probably shouldn't, you know? Um, like, I'm totally reusing some names here, stupid names. I could, like, just try to remember, you know? I'm not a experienced Node.js developer or anything like that. I've never worked with it, but I assume that they've got, like, some packaging namespacing solution. Maybe they don't. Oh, I think they do, though. they got that require thing, you know? Um or whatever, similar to how Lua has require, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm just using bare, plain old JavaScript here, and so that's something I gotta consider. So let's just see if throwing it in there does the thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think I don't know much about JavaScript. This is interesting to me, honestly. I don't really know either. I'm just like a just doing it live, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, there are some, so JavaScript is a weird realm of programming because most people, probably everybody, is using some kind of a Node.js kind of a thing, you know, and, and they provide a lot of things that are handy. Yeah, uh, section eight. Yeah, you could make it a separate module and use let bindings to declare them, import that, but also screw that. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's, okay. That might be one approach to consider in the future. I think actually just declaring them local to the, to the function will probably work. Um, maybe like actual JavaScript devs are looking at this and just being like, this is terrible. What are you doing? <laughs> but I think it works. You know, the JavaScript usage on the website is just so simple. Um, it's so minimal. I didn't want to introduce what is, in my opinion, you know, large amounts of complexity that's required for Node.js stuff. You know, like, I don't know how many build tools they got in that community and this, that, and the other thing. So I just wanted to keep it simple. We're not trying to use a lot of JavaScript here. We're just doing the bare minimum, right? Um, I'm only doing this because I can't really reasonably do it too well with um, the back end. I could use cookies. I don't like doing that. JavaScript storage feels better. So yeah, here we are. Huh. I think this will work just fine. 
Okay, if Anne says, I often do a constants module in Rust and import them on a need-to-know basis as well. Yeah, yeah, I do that in my Lua mods. Um, it's just handy, and I don't like having random strings everywhere, you know. Um, and especially with Lua mods, you can have localizations, you know, so um, I digress. Let's uh, reload the, the web page here. Do I have my console? Here it is. All right, good. Storage key is not defined. <sighs> Set MW to 62. Hmm. Well, would help if this was the right file. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this be a problem of my... Thankfully, it looks like storage key is the only global that we need to have, so fine. Uh, I'm willing to commit this atrocity for the time being. Uh, oh, yes, Rustacians in the in the chat. I'm a big Rust fan. I don't write ru any Rust at, um, at the moment. I'm not against it, but uh, I'm a big fan of what I see people doing with it. That includes you, Section 8. You people, you crazy people. Uh, okay, what am I doing here? Mm hmm All right. There we go. I think this is, I think this kind of a uh, nonsense is worth it to not have to deal with Node.js. No offense to Node.js. Very good. Now, hopefully, we please the JavaScript gods. Hmm. No. <laughs> Current. Okay. Hmm. One more global that we need. And local storage. Uh, is. Okay, that's just already in scope. So we need current span to be global as well. See the slippery slope we're walking here? <laughs> All right. It's fine. This is fine, right? Current span. So maybe I don't need to redeclare here and I can just. See, this is the re where things get really spicy because, like, if this file happens to load before this one, this is not going to be declared. And bad things will happen. So, here's what we're going to do. Here is what we're going to do. We're just going to, we're going to make it local to both functions um, and have a little bit of repetitiveness at, for the guarantee of safety. We're not going to have like some asinine race condition happening. <clears throat> because um, JavaScript, by the way, is entirely asynchronous. There's no guarantee that this really is going to run before this, actually. Even though it comes before it, most of the time you're going to get serialized execution, but um, you can't really guarantee it. You need to use explicitly synchronous uh, patterns if you want to be synchronous. <laughs> Fun times. Okay. Uh, yeah, copy to clipboard. That was another... Ooh, by the way, folks, yeah, that's another thing we're working on. Let me... You may have noticed. I was scrolling around here like a madman. There's the copy to clipboard. Right now, it's a piece of text. I don't know. Maybe we can make it like a little button here at some point. Um, but the intention is click it, and it puts this to your clipboard, and then you just, you know, paste it into a file. Or we, maybe we can have like a download as a file snippet or something like that or maybe one button at the top here hmm yeah I don't know maybe we could have like one button at the top here that will give folks like a 
settings that CFG and like an open MW CFG snippet without like the proprietary um, fallback values from Morrowind.ini. You know, just this stuff and this stuff. Hmm, something to think about. Maybe we'll do that. The idea being, though, to make it easy to use this content because it will now be, thankfully, usable. All right. So we need this to do something besides blow up. Yeah, Ifane says, yeah, that could be nice. For sure. Um, the whole goal, again, to reiterate, of 5.10 being, let's make the CFG generator output accurate completely, 100%. That's what we're committed to, but also um, make it so you can like use it. You know, it's one thing to have like the correct folder recommendations, but it's another thing to have something that you could reasonably use for your own PC, right? So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, okay, we're still current span not defined. You. All right. Hey, it did something. It didn't blow up though. Just don't F up the OS-specific line endings. Uh, you know what? Um, yeah. I think we will just... Hmm, yeah, that's a... I didn't think about that. Thank you, Afane. <laughs> um, we'll probably always just give it Windows-friendly, you know? Put the carriage returns in there. Doesn't hurt Linux people, except for now we're going to have the indicators of that, and that's what DOS2 Unix is for if it really bothers you. Ideally, though, you have this generator because you're not trying to look at the files, right? You're just trying to put them in there and use them. Um, and that's where the extremely alpha MOMW launcher program is going to come in. It will use these snippets, uh, perhaps automatically even, right? You just tell it, I want the mod list, blah, 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 and uh, it will download the config for you. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Back to business. So clearly this is working, though, the way I want it to. Um... The question, though, is mm, the question is, do I want to do this shenanigans where? So what I'm doing here is uh, I am taking at a high level. I'm taking this block of text here, which was just a it's a code HTML code block. Um, I right, says open MW can probably handle all line endings. Yes, that's correct. It doesn't doesn't care any like well-written program shouldn't really care i would think um but i digress what we have here is an html code element just containing a giant block of text and what i have done to accommodate um selectively editing such that we don't change this but we do change literally everything else without hacky shenanigans like Oh, don't edit the first one, because what if we're playing RoboWind? Which is its own game and won't have Morrowind, you know? We would we would want to change that, you know what I'm saying? So we don't want to have, like, hacky garbage like that. We're trying to move away from hacky garbage. That's what this whole update is about. <clears throat> so what we're doing here instead is we're taking this block of text. We're splitting it up line by line. We're looking at it, and we're trying to tell, is this folder path for Morrowind? And if it is, we're not touching it. We're just, you know, old text here as I named the variable. We're just putting it in there as is. And you can see that working in action on here, right? Boom. So, yeah, home, username, obscenely short. We just got the awkward padding in there, right? And that's because I'm creating the new code element here with JavaScript. Not good for accessibility, by the way. We're creating a new text node for the text. We're putting it into the new thing we just created, and then we're sliding the thing we just created into the existing thing that's in HTML statically. What we could do instead, though, let us entertain this for a moment. Let's not do any of this. Because now, still, as you see from my to-do message, we have to create a new class, CSS class. And in that CSS class, we'll assign it to the, the new code that we're creating. We do that down here, by the way. We do the same thing, except for we are replacing. And that's how you see that magic on the page. Instead of creating totally new elements, though, what if we just had a bl new block of text and we plopped it in there? I think that's way cleaner, honestly, than all the shenanigans with um, new elements and such. So let's try to do that instead. All right, um, so instead, so this should be a lot simpler. We'll just simply say um, new text. 
And um, if you're not familiar with programming as syntaxes, this is a common syntax plus equals for uh, appending, right? Like taking a string and, you know, smacking it onto the back. Um, so here we're going to say, this is our condition where this is the moral wind path. We don't want to touch it in this bit of JavaScript. We have a separate bit of JavaScript for that. It's just rain in JavaScript. So we want the old text to be this. Boom. Hey, I think this is going to work. <laughs> All right. And it will be much better. I don't know. It was late last night when I was hacking on this. You should never write JavaScript when you haven't had enough sleep. True story. All right. Now, um, back up here. Um, all right. And so we want this to be our swapped out version of the text. And we're going to do this kind of a thing here. Also, just want to say language server support for JavaScript, even just vanilla JavaScript. Very, very good. I'm happy with it. It makes it easy for a caveman brain like me. Get it done right or reasonably right enough. All right. Um, yeah, that should be that should be it. And then. Um, Okay, so if we have it, yeah. And let's say text so in JavaScript, <clears throat> you can access the appropriately named text content of a node, an element with uh, text content. And we're just flat out replacing it with a straight up equal sign to a new text. Is it gonna work? Are we gonna have the Todd moment here? <laughs> okay, no wait. This is actually it basically worked. Check it out, okay? Um and foo. Yeah, hey, look, it worked. This is great. Except we need to do one more thing. Um I don't know. Maybe there's a better way to stick a new line on there, but that's what we need. Come on now. Um I like this a lot better. There we go. Hey, ho, all right. Um, see, JavaScript is fun, folks. Uh, oh, me, oh, my. This is... <laughs> we got some weird values there. Not going to lie. Let's refresh the page, okay? Yeah, why did it say that's foo? I'm going to go ahead and set that back. I must have goofed something here. Storage key based error. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um. Oh, you know what? I probably have to nuke my browser session here. It's all cached. Okay. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to keep that open, but I'm just going to open a new one. Um, I don't trust the browser cache enough to just clear it, and I don't want to close that one because I got some stuff open that I want. So I'm going to have, have yet another profile that gets used when I click it from the terminal here. Give us a little clean slate. And, and yeah, you might have noticed, by the way, if you go to the beta website, um, at the suggestion in Herdrax of Gonzo, uh, thank you so much for the idea. We put a link to the stream on the homepage now, um, which I think is cool. Uh, doesn't work here because of just some security policy stuff um, regarding linking. But uh, yeah, if you go to the beta, you can see it on there. And hey, you know, be how meta. Watch the stream while you're watching the stream. Anyways, all right, so a little obscene path there, obscenely, and then uh, home, Todd, 
Morrowind Vita Files. <laughs> Yikes. Gonzo just tested it and it works. Nice. Okay, thank you for doing that, my man. Um This is a problem. <laughs> Yikes. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you, Section 8. That's dope. Great idea to stick the stream in your site. Increase visibility a lot. Yeah, I thank you for the comment. Yeah, and it will be a lot better, too, after tonight. Uh, you know, Gonzo, Herdrex, and I, we're going to put our heads together, and we'll get the um, the chat output finally overlaid on the video, and we'll even try to have some cool Pelagiad font, you know, have some uh, community-appropriate. <laughs> Let's do an annoying pop-up. Yeah, well, you know, we could. Oh, on the website, yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, so I thought about that. Actually, um, I thought that having some kind of visual feedback might be good, but like right now we have this updating, right? So I think it should be good enough. But like, why, why, why that? <laughs> um, clearly, there's something. Yeah, I mean, it looks right. Best I can tell. Oh, wait, wait. No, no, no. Ha! Did you see it? Gonzo says, or we could go whole hog and make the Trojan horse that just forces you to watch the stream when it's online. Yeah, right? Like, uh, oh, yeah. So, okay, yeah. I see what you guys are talking about now. Whoosh! Yeah, we, what we really need on the website, I think, is... Uh, oh, hey, Sophia, thank you for joining. I'm glad you're here. Um, yeah, I think what the website really needs is we need, like, if it's not open, somehow we'll put something on your browser that pops it open, puts the stream full screen, and, like, uh, I don't know, plays the Rickroll song. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, well, do you see the error? I see it. Pop up Johnny. Yeah, I mean, you know. No, I'm just kidding, though. I'm totally not serious about doing that. But that's a funny idea. Like, what's the most annoying way we could improve the website uh, to be more, you know, annoying? We, we need more use of the blink element. We need more pop-ups. We need more, like, things that steal your mouse's focus. I don't know about you folks. When I'm using my computer, I love it when something pops up and steals the focus of the thing that I'm using, uh, you know. If you watch the stream at least 10 seconds, you can let the website generate the load order for you. Otherwise, sorry, says a fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, that is like not a terrible idea either. I don't know. Like I can it may add some like magical CFG reading stuff. Scrolling marquees and spinning gifts, says Gonzo. Yeah, we need, I mean, like we need like a, if you're not familiar with the design of the era 1990s, late 90s uh, website, you know. <laughs> Detail Devil, follow Johnny on Twitch to unlock the CFG generator. Yeah, now you're talking. We need DLCs for the website. Oh my gosh, now you're truly thinking at a toddly level. Uh, we need basically we need the proverbial horse armor of the website, a big spinning GIF of Todd that randomly appears on the screen, kind of like in Mortal Kombat when you uppercut somebody and uh, one of the designers would like pop up. You know, always wanted to do something like that. Todd would be proud. Sophia says, "Yeah, I know. Uh, that's my goal in life." <laughs> All right, um, whoosh, before you guys make me forget what I'm doing, I got to fix this. What was the problem, Johnny? Well, let me show you. Right here, we got an element. The one that I was going to make global, like a fool, instead of actually looking at what it does. Well, you know, you kind of have a John Romero thing going. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I mean, says so Section 8, uh... Kinda, you know, he looks a little bit metal heady, as far as I know. I want an It Just Works audio cue when you press the submit button on the CFG generator. You got it, A-Fane. That's an excellent idea. Wow, we need that clip. We need that clip. I know you can do this kind of stuff with Twitch, and eventually I will stop being an old Twitch old man, and I'll figure out how to get that kind of fun stuff, <laughs> and we'll, we'll annoy everybody. What if we had stuck your head on a pike in some secret location somewhere? Oh, uh, you know what? 
uh, Section 8. I would totally would love that. I remember somewhat recently on the Starwind Discord that Billy was asking folks to, like, make models of their heads. And I think he made one of yours, didn't he? We totally need, like... If you ever play Chrono Trigger, there's uh, if you can get the hard ending, there's like a secret developer's room where you can like talk to the developers. We need something like that. <clears throat> oh, he didn't do it. Uh, I was going to say, we need like a room with like uh, each of our heads on a pike and can have dialogue with us. <clears throat> Sounds like a threat, says uh, Detail Devil. <laughs> no, Todd approves. All right, uh, let's get away of here. Current MW Dur. All right. I'm not going to get too crazy. Current. There we go. All right. MW Dur. Uh, so the problem, folks, was I basically copy pasted the. Um, let's see here. To make this section, I just copy pasted this and like made some edits. You know. You know how you do. If you wrote any line of code, you'd want to do that. Um, but I, that's a, you know, a fool's errand as well because we had two spans on the page with the same ID collision. So that was a problem. That was why it went bad. Let's go ahead and uh, reopen a fresh session. Oh my, where'd I go? Here we go. All right. Get this uh, whoop. handy dandy JavaScript console. Good, good. Okay, home Todd. I mean, let's face it, home Todd. That is the data files folder. Okay, I still did the wrong thing. That's okay. Mm, did I not save a file? Close the browser. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, buddy, check myself. Oh. Shh. I'm not a dummy. There we go. Yay, it works. Home Todd. That is the proverbial folder path, really, for your data files. So does it work? Does it actually work? I don't know about you, but the suspense is killing me. Boom. Look at that, Gonzo. So this would be our Morrowind folder path. And everything else goes in the, you know, where your mods are. And if we do something like this, so, like, you can make a custom folder path here. <laughs> it doesn't work quite yet. Okay. I swear I'm not lying, but if you do something like that, if you selected just Morrowind, and you can see up here in the URL. Actually, we might make, we might make this work. How much time we got? We got time. We might look at this next. Um, but if you make a query with just Morrowind, you'll get a result much like this. But if you did a query with just PFP... Obviously, that's not a legit load order, but let's just say you did that to test the code of the CFG generator. You would it, you would see just this, you know, and it would be right. Um, let's make that work. Real quick. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't try that at home, folks. Let's try it. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to unstage the copy to clipboard thing. We'll come back to that later. I don't want to subject you all to too much JavaScript. It is still kind of early in the day for some of you, I bet. All right, uh, that is, we need this one. Yeah, so I made, you may have noticed, I made this one a little bit wider, because, you know, like, you might have, like, C, game, Steam, Steam apps, uh, you know, this Steam path is, like, ridiculously long, you know, so um, I wanted to have like a large enough box where it wouldn't like, you know, crunch up on folks. So I made it a little bit bigger here with some CSS. And we're going to stage that as part of the commit. 
Uh, nope, not related to what we're doing. This, though. Okay, let's see here. What did I do? Oh, okay, this is just me. Me, trying to remember what I did five days ago. <laughs> uh, I don't think this is related to what we're doing now. This is just me putting in the, um, the copy, the clipboard stuff. So we don't need to stage that, because that's not ready. Mm, oh yeah, does that work? I added a, uh, 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 I quite wanted like the mouse, there we go. Hey, you can hover over the stream and you get a little tool tip. Watch the website creator live stream, working on the website, modding, playing OpenMW and more. And here we are, I didn't need to tell you guys, but if somebody were to, because I personally, when I'm browsing things, I like to, you know, you, you hold your mouse over things and you get a tool tip. Um, technically works here it's not conjuring itself again but yeah i did that and it works good to see that <clears throat> mm, yeah we need this that'd be the bit of html on the settings page also wondering what you folks think because right now you're coming to the website right it says start here but nowhere on this page we're going to want to add this before we launch 5.10 nowhere on this page do we tell people yo you got to go Set your folder paths. You want to do that, you know? Um, so I'm thinking maybe we can just say, like, you know, somewhere on here. Yeah, Gonzo, we need a settings. There. Somewhere on this page we'll say, oh, by the way, you know, at the bottom of every single page. Cool. Thank you so much, Gonzo. Add it to the related issue. On every single page on the website, this and the, the friendly footer nav links are here. Um, and so you can get to it anywhere. And, again, this is... Uh, Stored on your PC, my website doesn't have access to this information. My website can never know what this is. Um, and other websites cannot know either because JavaScript local storage is, uh, you know, it's sandbox like that. So in case you're wondering about, you know, people prying into what your folder path is, no worries. All right. Um, so we don't need that other CSS. We don't need that code. We do need this. I'm fairly certain there is a related issue. Gonzo, can you do me a favor, man? Can you check on GitLab if there is an issue for... And actually, never scratch that. I was going to say, check and see if there's an issue for setting a custom folder path. The ship sailed, obviously, on other commits, but maybe we can amend this commit and add it in there. If you feel like it, and if you find it, let me know what the number is. Excuse me. All right. So, just a moment ago, I was talking about uh, custom queries for the CFG generator. And what I mean by that is, let me just open this up right here. And actually what we want to do is, we want to have this output viewable while we're hacking on the website. Righto. Make sure my face isn't covering up too much of it. Not seeing a related issue. Thank you, Gonzo. No biggie. Not necessary. I think the ship sailed on that. Um... All right, so what I want to see here now is we go to the CFG generator, and we're going to make a custom mod list of just Morrowind. So what should happen here is we should see stuff, but there is no stuff. So as you can see, I started to work on it. What we're doing here is at the very top of this uh, function here, we, are, we have two forms. You got the preset form, taking a step back in HTML, whenever you uh, click a button that would like reload the page and change stuff, like maybe you, uh, you know, log in to, you know, Nexus mods, that is a form and you are submitting the form. Um, and that's kind of like a HTML idiom. And 
in Django, we interact with that like anything else with functions or, or classes that represent functions. Um, I believe, let's see. This is some code I haven't looked at in a long time. Uh, yeah, these are just classes subclassing, like kind of like how I make my database models. Django comes with some like default forms that you can map to database models. That's what I'm doing here. Um, model form maps this to a mod for the user feedback form. Anywho. Um, what we do here in the CFG generator code is, uh, in the Python code, is we go ahead and we grab those forms. What we're doing here is we're passing it. This request get is what you see right here. That would be that question mark and everything after it. That is your get parameters. Um, when you submit a URL like this, it's a HTML verb called a get. But... It, when you log in to Nexus Mods, for example, you don't really have parameters like this, and that's called a post. Probably more appropriate for logging in. You wouldn't want to send, like, your password part of the URL. That's very bad. For the purpose of the CFG generator, my thinking was, well, hey, I can, like, make a custom mod list, and then I got, like, a URL here that I can send to my cousin, you know, Johnny. Johnny and Johnny. Um, and you know, now we can share this mod list. Um, and it doesn't save anything in my website's database. It's never on my computer or anybody else's computer. So that was my thinking behind this. Let's make it work now. All right. We need to look at this. Let's say preset. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're basically not giving anything to the page here. What's happening here? Um, we are querying. You can see here that we got something out of the database, that little highlighted bit down there. Um, we have a query set that contains the mod Morrowind. But we're not doing anything else. You can see here the presets, pretty busy. Mostly boring, but, you know, we're, get, we're getting stuff. And we're not doing that here. So. Let's try to add more mods and see what it gives us. I think we're going to get a query set no matter what. Some more wind. Oh, that's something we got to fix, too. Should uh, have these already pre-selected. So this is a multiple select form HTML element. And you can control click, as I say here. Select a bunch of stuff. Or you can click, hold, shift, and do that. Works too. And as you can see here, boom, we got a query set. All right. We sure do. Cool. So I think it's not really going to look much different. Um, it's going to be a little bit more verbo verbose, though. We're going to be assigning values to all these things. So let's say for M in mods. Uh, so taking a step back, let's rename this to mods. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That's an autocomplete fail right there. Do not try this at home. Emacs is not for the faint of heart or the sane of mind. There we go. Now we can have a nicer mod in mods. <clears throat> And so what I want to do, we're, it's going to be a bit busier in that we're not going to have just a neat little database query here. You know, this is like pretty nice code, if you ask me. Just directly querying the database for Starwind plugins that are not BSA or ground cover. Pretty obvious what's going on there. No for loops adding, you know, runtime complexity to the code. It's pretty good. This one, though, we unfortunately, we have to kind of do a little more work. So for the mod in the mods, we're going to say um, if mod, uh, mm, come on, you're going to be, you're going to help me out here, language server? No? Uh, thank you so much, Gonzo. Added a little blurb about the user settings on issue 212. Thank you so much. Good call there. Um, come on, give me what I want. Mod. 
I feel like it's probably geeking out. There we go. Okay, mod. All right. I need the help of my autocomplete here. Come on, friend. No, 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 no. Big disappoint. Okay. No problem. We're just going to dive into the database directly, which I do not mind doing. All right, so we, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to say if the mod has plugins, put it into the plugins. If the mod has ground cover, put it in the ground cover. It's going to be kind of repetitive, stupid code, but we got to do it to get the data we need to give the config that the users want. Um, and so we jump into the IPython shell here. If you're hacking on Python ever, highly recommend making sure you also have IPython console which is what this is and you can just do what I did here I assigned M to the value of a mod from the database you type M period you hit tab and boom you get this little pop-up here that tells you you know all the stuff that you got to work with and so here we go that's what I was looking for yay that's what I want my editor to do language server but um yeah if a knows what I'm talking about the good old IPython exploration yeah you know what I'm talking about in a perfect world where Todd has blessed me thusly like I would get this here in my editor, but language server is a little derpy. I'm still really glad that I have it, but like, come on, what's happening? <laughs> I'm waiting, you know, it's, so it's unfortunate. So data paths is um, a related manager. So we'll say uh, we can do something like this. Whoa, 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 too much. That was a alt backspace, which apparently in Emacs is erase a crap ton of stuff. It's one of those things I never use, except for when I accidentally do it. If mod data pass count is greater than zero, I guess. Um, or maybe we could even just say if data pads count, because zero would be interpreted as a Boolean false, maybe. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I like. I like this better. Um, and so the unfortunate thing about doing a custom list is, um, at least for now, we can't really like do what we're doing here. If you uh, if you say I heart vanilla, um, you know, and it kind of gives you the the right plugins, right? The right data paths. It's apparently broken right now. <laughs> um, we can't really do that here because we don't have the 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 benefit of being able to be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, as we're going in our data paths assignments for mod lists, we know what works for the mod list because we have explicitly, you know, somebody went in there, tested it, used it, we know it's good. We put it in our data. This is kind of like Wild West anarchy. You know, you're throwing whatever at the code, and for now, at least, we're not quite um, smart enough. The code is not quite smart enough to do the right thing, but maybe we'll get there, you know. It's not impossible. All right, and uh, so going back here, so, and let's say we got here. So data path will have. Ooh, so we're gonna need to know the visitors OS here. No. Uh, because we need to put the right, you know, folder path in. Um, ah, so this is going to be a little nasty. Ugh. All right. Hmm. Okay. 
Get visitor OS. Oh my, okay. That file I thought was going away. And we're gonna probably put a cap on this within the next 10 minutes or so and we'll jump into, uh, you know, a little bit of interior decorating, shall we? Um, cfg.py. Yeah, that doesn't, okay, here it is. Oh my. Don't try that at home. Tmux failing. All right. I think I can safely rip this function out. Ooh. That's a bummer. Got a little warning here. Orange squiggly lines of disapproval here. Cyclomatic complexity is too high. This function is too busy. I'm just going to probably look up how to tell the complexity checker no. Because, uh, you know, this is next necessary complexity. We've got a lot going on here. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right. Um, so don't need that. But we do need. So we want to say... Um, at the top here, is a tour OS get visitor on. There you go, language server. You can do it, little buddy. All right, and then we have the fairly mundane task now of, you know, if is a, it's gonna give us a string like. Come on, yeah. Uh, come on, you can do it. <sighs> How irritating. I can type three letters. Yeah. And then we do an L with. Is, uh, eh, just totally totally gone no more autocomplete and maybe it'll come back later Oop. that's fine Uh, section 8 says, are you actually using LSP currently? Yes, I am. Actually, you probably can't tell, but down here in my mode line, I got Pi LSP. Um, at the re recommendation of Ifane, actually, I had been using, like, PyWrite, which was completely, like, if you think this is bad, PyWrite didn't even work, you know. Um, it was, like, crashing on me. Um, so, yeah. I'm curious, I know you're Emacs using, user, uh, you got Space Emacs going on. Um, yeah. I wonder if you're using LSP, like what your setup is. I noted that uh, Jedi, which is what I used to use before the LSP days, now has like a LSP backend. Um, and Jedi was really, really good back in the day. So maybe I need to look at that again. I don't know. This is the kind of thing I don't like hacking on, though. Autocomplete kept falling apart since the update to 29, removed LSP completely. Gotcha, Section 8. Yeah, you know, I actually have a note on my personal to-do list to look at Eglot, which is now built into Emacs LSP server. You know, if it just does what I want it to do, that would be pretty nice. I found great success in s making my Emacs setup a lot less complicated by using built-in stuff. Uh, like uh, Corfu, which uses, you know, the built-in Emacs autocomplete. I digress. Here we are now. Dude, I can't even tell the difference, except it worked. Nice. Okay. That's great. That, I think, is the design intention behind it, Eagle Eye. It's just work. It's like Todd approved software, whereas LSP is like... Oblivion years Todd approved software, right? Like it's like it just works and we're giving you the horse armor too, you know. <laughs> uh right. So how do we how do we tell if this is working? There should be something here. And we'll wrap it up here in just a moment.
hey, there we go. That's wrong. Um, but it's something is there. Yay. Um, oh, you know what? That's because I need to... Mm, I'm already doing this. Ooh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. <laughs> I'm already one step ahead of myself. Yay, all right. So yeah, as you can see, um, basically just repeat this for each of these data structures here. Gotta fill them up. We'll do that later on. Um, for now though, let's go back to the stream plan. Hey, look at that. We actually did both of those today. How about that? Um, tone down the cloud density. Hmm, per uh, Sophia's suggestion. Uh, maybe we'll look at that towards the end of the stream. Um, or maybe I'll do that post stream today. But that's actually a pretty quick... I'm going to actually fork Zestra's clouds. Maybe Zestra will do something um, down the road when there's a little bit more capability in OpenMW to, to have like it. Because I, I kind of agree at nighttime we do want to tone down the clouds a little bit. But we can do it with Lua for now crudely by just turning the density knob down. Um, but for now let's you know take a look at um, Some Enchanted Evening which is a mod that I'm working on. A story mod that uh, explores gives I guess a little bit of lore to a couple of characters that are kind of underlooked I think in my travels in Morrowind and modding um, we're talking about uh, come on now Galbadir in the Balmor Mages Guild we're talking about um, Corwin who is if you didn't know he is the enchant training master and he is hostile I mean, really, has like he'll kick your butt. Um, and so I always thought, like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could actually use Corwin reasonably without, like, lots jank going on? Um, I mean, because if you think about it, you would have to, like, calm him, train, and then very quickly calm him again because when you train, time's going to pass, you know? Or I don't know, maybe there's some other way, Todd-approved way I don't know about. Anywho, let's drop the desk down and get ready for this. All right, yeah, so my idea was um, for the mod, you know, have a little bit of dialogue that will lead you eventually to finding out about uh, something through Galbadir. I'm not going to spoil it too much. Um, and indeed, if you don't want any spoilers at all, maybe, you know, tune out the stream. Um, but we're going to look at now is a little bit of an editing session at the request of Herdrex and Gonzo. Uh, going to load up the plugin, and we will um, just kind of do a little session of like putting some I actually got to put like a roof on this room and I'll explain a little bit of my um my goals and stuff and we'll go from there all right let's get the config loaded up just make sure I'm good to go here we have OAAB data as well as my mod files loaded um as of right now I was playing around with having some 0 0.49 exclusive Lua support um I don't know if I will keep doing that, though, but that's neither here nor there for today's purposes, at least. All right. Disconnect from the database. All right. Run the old CS. Mm, you know what? Actually, before I do that. in progress edit yesterday that I don't want to save. All right. Let's put my camera down a little bit more. All right. Cool. Okay. And uh, yeah, I actually accidentally have OAAB cells as a dependent plugin here, but it's not. Just while I'm developing and I need some divine inspiration. So my normal workflow is I have two monitors and I have 
two windows of the open MWCS open on each of them. Doesn't really work too well for a stream, so we're gonna keep it to just one, but just so you know, I have two monitors. On one monitor, I have the 3D editing view. I'm gonna open that up right now. And... And then on my other monitor, I would um, have like an object list or something and I can like drag and drop things across. Uh, for the sake of having, you know, you all out there being able to see it, we're not going to do that today. I'm going to keep everything on here so it might look a little cluttered. I apologize. Okay, so I actually have... Um, let's see. Let me get this document open. And I actually have some pre-saved. Yeah, here we go. I'll share this in here. I have some pre-saved. Uh, filters that I'm using to find the things I need. Whoops to place around the, the map. And so what you what you would do is um, open it up like I got right here and you got the good old record filter box up there. This is the dungeon, we'll zoom in in a moment. And uh, so we need a list of stuff to put down, right? And I've got s certain criteria of things that I want and um, there's a few ways you can find that out. Number one, going back to the cells idea, you can say, uh, is that a name? We have the OAAB cells example suite, which I think is worth diving into just real quick. Let's see here. So I personally, I'm making a Dwemer ruin here. I personally was using, let's pop this out. This one. Come on, you can do it little buddy. So this would be Something that the OAAB data team has put together. I, If you've probably seen this on the stream before, if you've watched. Um, but yeah, there's various themes where you can see these things in action. You know, they all have kind of cryptic names that are abbreviated, obfuscated, and it's hard to know what something is most of the time strictly by looking at the object name. But when you have something like this, it makes designing a little bit like less stressful, right? Like, oh my gosh, what do I have to work with? They did a really just outstanding job. I mean, just look at all this cool Dwemer stuff. You know, you know what it is. You can hold your mouse over it, get the object ID. And so I, this is what I did, just kind of perusing about this and seeing what I liked and what I thought would work in my interiors. And from this, I built the object queries filters that I have uh, in my text document. So let's grab one of these. Um, This is game changing, Gonzo Games. Yeah, I mean, this is a big productivity boost for me, and it's not maybe like the end all, you know, Todd bless us all approved way of doing it. Like, you know, we've discussed before, there are probably some other ways we can have to discover things, or even just typing a string in there to search would be kind of neat. Have like a, a basic search mode, you know, fuzzy matching. I digress. This works really well, though, when you know exactly what you want. So, this one, for example, will give me basically. All the the dwarven things, all the Dwemer things that I want, and then a couple of the custom objects that I made for the mod, M-O-M-W underscore. Let's just throw that one in there. Boom, and here you go. So there's a couple of ways to directly identify OAAB, OAAB data stuff. Time to have a sip. I think probably all their stuff has an a b underscore prefix what i'm using is if i wanted to just look at oaab data objects i would use a query like this one right here 
where I'm looking at the model animation field and I'm going for OAAB double slash there and then anything because they do also prefix all their stuff with that folder and I think that's a bit more of a sure thing. So anyways, what we got here, as I said, you know, you can't really know what these things are from the names. It's not too useful. That's why having that other cell, I might even have that one open on this monitor, you know, um, or maybe get really crazy and like go connect another monitor and have three monitors up really crazy. But that would be, you know, you could do that reasonably and, and be biz productive. Have like the center be the 3D view. Excuse me. And we just scroll down. And so, yeah, this one is all the Dwarven stuff with a couple of lights. Because I want to chuck some lights in there. Three monitors. It just works, eh, fan. Yeah, you know it. Um, you know, when you're getting really busy, you want nothing to get in the way. You don't want to be tabbing around awkwardly if you don't have to. Um, and yeah, and you can see some of the some of the objects I made. So uh, my intention of this dungeon was to be heavily inspired by The Legend of Zelda. Which, if you're not familiar with The Legend of Zelda series... I strongly recommend playing Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. You only have to play maybe the first hour to really get what I'm saying here, but the intro of that game may be the most masterfully created tutorial of any game because it's not a tutorial at all, but you come away from it perfectly prepared for basically anything the game is going to throw at you, right? Like... You're ready for a hookshot, even though you have no idea what a hookshot is. <laughs> Fane says, Zelda's the green guy, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's Todd's uh, cousin Zelda, who wears the pajamas, the green pajamas. Exactly. In all seriousness, though, yeah. Um, and the reason I bring it up is because uh, Zelda has pink hair, I think. Yeah, Stan knows for sure. <laughs> the reason why I bring it up, though, is because, yeah, it is just like expertly designed gameplay but also dungeons and what you get a lot in the old school 2d zelda games is like you might be in a situation like this this is where you first enter into the dungeon you're in here with good old arendelle who is uh arendelle is another npc that's in the vanilla game and doesn't really get used too much he happens to have a little bit of mysticism ability so i've kind of used that to say hey he can teleport you um and uh, Aaron Dill will take you here, and you and you start in this room. And from the get go, I wanted to give Zelda vibes, right? Closed doors, stuff laying around. What do I do? You know, I'm just gonna walk around, and this looks a little awkward here, but okay. Ooh, what's this? And so, if you're actually playing, you can activate this. A message will pop up. You'll get a journal update. the The wall moved, and this thing will come down. And then now you're in here. And so this is where my lack of clutter ability kind of shows itself. <laughs> um, but my intention was that this is, I wanted to build on the Dwemer lore, right? We all know about Kagranak and Dumak and all their enchanting abilities. We also all know about their ability to create, you know, animunculi, weaponry, uh, robotic weaponry. And so I wanted to expand on that a little bit here and say, okay, you know, the Dwemer were not, like, perfectly aligned, I don't think. Um, maybe there was a faction in the Dwemer that was not too big on enchantments. They didn't want to play around with god parts, right? Probably for good reason. These folks in the Dwemer camp over here at this ruin, they had what was, uh, I guess you could be considered, a weapons facility. And so my intent here is to say, yeah, this was the faction of Dwemers that maybe were knowledgeable about enchanting, but they were more focused on robotics and technology. And so that's why you got these consoles all over, right? And keeping in the spirit of uh, Zelda, oh, Fane says, the Minish Cap was the first game I owned before that I only borrowed games from friends. Nice! You know, Minish Cap is one of the only 2D Zeldas that I never beat all the way. I really gotta do that on my Steam Deck. Um... Personally, my favorite Zelda game is uh, Link's Awakening. And if you never played Link's Awakening on the Game Boy Color, I just strongly recommend it. It's phenomenal. Um, but, you know, that's only if, like, you're really committed and don't have a backlog. <laughs> but if you're curious about game deny design expertise, you got to, got to play Legend of Zelda Link to the Vast Super Nintendo. <laughs> Godzo, Link's Awakening was my first game ever, and it certainly made an impression. Yeah, man. And the Switch port was just like brought a tear to my eye it was so beautiful you know um 
it was a little laggy, whatever. Anyway, so in keeping with the Zelda motif, um, uh, okay, I had a pink Game Boy Advance. Good times. A fan says, yeah, I had a purple one, which I tra- I eventually sold and got uh, they had, like the sky blue ones when the SP finally got like a backlight. And that's what I still have upstairs somewhere. I also have a Game Boy Micro. If you never played a Game Boy Micro, way underrated. Maybe one of the day, one of these days on the stream, I'll like shove it in front of the camera for y'all. I played it on an emulator without the nasty blur thing. Gonzo says, "Okay, right on. Yeah, <laughs> the nasty blur thing. Do you mean like, uh, oh yeah, for sure, like the Game Boy blur screen? Yeah, the monochrome. Mm. And the pixel density on the Game Boy Micro is awesome." Gonzo says, "Yes, exactly. It's beautiful. Very tiny." just beautiful and like the thing is this big it's awesome holds up today okay so anyways as i was saying in keeping with the legend of zelda kind of spirit i want to put like puzzles in each room so i want to have multiple rooms you can see here i kind of like left off uh kind of branching out of the second room but i wanted each room to kind of have a sort of a puzzle and when we think if you played zelda games we think about what they do in those games and you got like you got a lot of like push these blocks in a line or smash that pot and step on the button, you know. Um, uh, Fane only got an SP when my advance died, but SP is still around and working. Nice. We're going to have to do a Four Swords, you know, thing sometime. I'm sure we can do that online with the emulator. Four Swords is so awesome. Oh, Gonzo, I meant the Switch version. Oh, okay. Okay, tilt, ship. Okay, gotcha. You So you played it on a Switch emulator. Nice. I tried to do that. It didn't work out too. I tried it on my Steam Deck. Switch emulation was just a little too much for the poor little thing. I digress. So yeah, in Zelda, you know, you'll get a, you'll get a maybe bomb the wall here to go there. Or um, in this particular room, what I wanted to do was um, further to the sort of weapons arms factory motif that I have for this dungeon. I wanted to place a lot of um, bad guys in here, and so you might see on my object list here I've got a couple like um come on I got a couple like centaurians that I specially ID'd um dwarven ghost enemies um I'm not gonna keep these guys I'm just plopping them on there so you guys can see but yeah, so my intention was for this room to kind of go in keeping with uh, a theme you might see in some Zelda rooms where kill all the bad guys, pass through. And so what I was thinking is this room would be like, I don't know, where they're installing the OS on the robots, right? That's what the, all these panels are going to be for. And if you have mouse over them, you can see I gave them special IDs, activator three, four, five, six. And so what do I don't want to do with a script? I'm not going to do that today, I don't think. Um, but I want to do with a script is randomly have one of these be the one that opens the door over here. Do, 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 and you can go. No problem, all right? But if you get any of the other ones, something bad might happen. You know, there's going to be like, I don't know, 20 animunculi in this room. Click the wrong one, and now <laughs> you got to fight. Um, and another idea I had was also in keeping with the Zelda design ideas is you could bomb the wall and open up a path maybe and we can do this with a script you know um that kind of a thing so anyways before i get too deep into the woods i actually have to run afk for just a moment i'm gonna leave y'all here with this i will be right back and we'll put the roof on this room all right
Ah, we're back. So sorry to keep you waiting. All right. Gonzo, hell yeah, Four Swords Adventures might be the most fun I've had playing multiplayer ever. You know, I couldn't actually get enough people to play Four Swords. Pretty expensive proposition if you think about it. GameCube, cables, and Game Boy Advance. Thank you. Yeah. Anywho, so here we are. Um, this has been... If you've never made a level before, if you've never designed a dungeon, I just have complete respect for anybody who's ever done it successfully, you know, um, including the designers of Morrowind themselves. Even if some of their dungeons are a bit, you know, repetitive and simple, I still have complete respect for them because it's not easy. You know, I had the idea for this room. Let's just make a big room. Just make a big room, right? And you might notice over here, I've got a bit of a pattern going. Um, can't exactly select them from above. Let's select them from underneath. Where we got these evenly sized ceiling tiles. But there's just one problem. It doesn't fit. <laughs> these don't quite match up with these lengths. And this is a issue I've had over and over again in trying to design this room. And then eventually I realized, like, wait a minute. I'm a designer. I'm designing. I can take liberties. I can do things. And so one of the things I did, let's make it bright in here, is, yeah, just, I mean, this is a buried weapons facility, right? Let's bury it. Boom. Stuff a rock in there. The ceiling doesn't fit. It's caved in. That's why. So let's find a rock to throw over here and fill that in. It's going to probably be a big one, like, like this one. Um... Let's get my rock filter. I have another filter here with rocks in the mix. All right. Here we go. Yeah, cave boulder. Hey, Altario. Thank you for joining. I'm so glad you're here. TR interior reviewers are screaming right now. Yeah, okay. So they feel my pain. I'm sure, right? Like... I had the I had a the brilliant idea to like kind of draw on a pen and paper, you know, the rough idea I had for the dungeon. Good idea, right? Yeah, except for your pen and paper ideas don't factor in like that <laughs> basically. Um so yeah, let's try to let's look at some of these other rocks I'm using. Maybe I can I found like this kind of a clutter to be extremely difficult. And I have mad respect for the likes of, you know, um, folks that make cool dungeons and, and fill it up with rocks and stuff. This was just, I felt awkward doing it. All right, so let's see what I use. Maybe I can use one of these, right? See, this is okay. This little bit right here I think is okay. Yeah, we would probably create a dedicated asset for this, says Altariel. Yeah, it probably, yeah, right? Like, you'd want, like, some kind of a... Something that looks like a caved in, maybe. You need vines and roots and stuff hanging down to hide your crime, says Gonzo. Yeah, exactly. Now you're talking, right? we got to work within the constraints of what we have. And I don't want to mix too many rock types here, so I'm using, like, the mold cave rocks. And I think I'm going to kind of stick with those. Because we got, you know... All kinds of... we got the lava cave and the, the mud caves. But I'm going to try to keep it consistent for now, at least... And we're going to use the Mold Cave Rock here. So, um, Cave Mold. Narrow it down a little bit. Oop. I don't know if that's... Sector, is that case sensitive up there in the filter? I assume it probably is. Not. Mm, okay. A, B, in. Get with it. There we go. Are you just building this off... 
OAAB pieces or vanilla as well? Eltariel asks. Yeah, I'm trying to include vanilla pieces as well too, if I can, if it makes sense. Um, I tend to reach first for OAAB stuff, but maybe there's some vanilla rocks. If you, we should probably scroll down a little bit here. In here we go. And again, we're working with the mold cave pieces, so maybe we can get one of these. Let's let's just go over here. And so, when I don't have, you know, the gallery cell open, and I want to see what something looks like, I don't know. You just plop it right here. That's obviously not what I want. Just a rock. I don't want that. Hmm. Maybe that's a bad filter. Yeah, here we go. This one has a bit more. Oh, maybe it's the same. Ooh. Uh, Eltariel says, I'm wondering if Tamriel Data would have something useful for this use case, but I think OAAB would have more Dwemer pieces than us. Um, I, for rocks, yeah, I should actually throw that into the mix. That's actually a good suggestion. Um, let's do that. Why not? We do have an awesome Dwemer Colossus enemy, though. Ooh, that actually... So, I didn't get to telling you all about this, but one of my goals for the mod was um, to have bosses. Uh, this particular dungeon is going to have, like, kind of an arena battle boss where you fight a bunch of animunculi for a Dwemer ghost NPC, but the mod itself will have a fully voiced by me uh, boss fight that is uh, inspired by something out of Fallout New Vegas's Old World Blues, if you ever played that. Uh, thank you, yeah. Awesome. Altario shared a link here. So yeah, anyway, that uh, Steam Colossus sounds perfect for what I'm going for here. Um, Steam Colossus. Oh, baby. Yeah, exactly. That one. <laughs> okay, so let's throw TR data into the mix. I'm very happy to do that. Didn't reach for it yet, but thank you for pointing out that you've got some cool assets in there. Herdrax, if you're not including TR data as a master to be able to use their BSA assets, you're doing it wrong, just saying. Very fair statement. I do agree. I'm very, you know, I'm kind of pumped that the mod has expanded this far, that I'm like reaching into more assets. All right, let's do it. Tamriel data HD. Well, yeah, let's do just the vanilla ones. I don't want to tax my potato too much. Okay, should be good. Let's take it up a notch. Yeah, <laughs> dang, that Colossus looks really cool, Gonzo says. Agreed. And I think it's safe to assume um, most folks are going to have TR data anyway, you know, especially if they have OAAB data already. Uh, Eltariel says, yeah, we haven't used it yet. I think it's waiting to be used for revamped camels. Yeah, nice. I didn't realize, by the way, until recently, how friggin' huge that dungeon is. Holy moly. Revamping Kemmel's Ed. Dungeon is already massive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Woo. I'm down. What can I say? All right. So, before I just zoom past what I'm doing here, I'm... Know that the name of my cell is unique enough that I can simply type KZ and get it right here. And so let's zoom what I'm doing. Get our 3D view back up. Let's get our objects window there. It's massive and empty in the general dev opinion. Kind of bad. Yeah, says Altariel regarding Camel's A. Yeah, you know, um, big is good. But I think uh, I'm a personally a big fan of uh, quality over quantity for a dungeon, you know. So very much looking forward to uh, what you folks come up with there. 
That's exciting. All right, let's get our objects back up in here. Uh, okay. Let me just do this query. Ah, you know what? I wonder, can I, uh, Altario, maybe you can answer this question for me. So I'm filtering on OAAB stuff in a certain way. Um, I suppose there's like a prefix I could filter on for TR data stuff. Um, let's see. T underscore. Excellent. So let's go. I always like to type my query in Emacs and then paste it into here because when I uh, when you type it into here it's like updating it every time you type and that can get a little laggy which is I think you want that um, filter TR into a thank you so much Herdrex I appreciate that let's just go ahead and plop this string there we go uh There we go. Did I unpack the BSA? No, I just loaded it in. All right. There we go. Wow. Look at that. TR Sky. So all kinds of Skyrim rocks. Let's take a look at these. Good rock, rock inspection music, chocobo music. I don't think that's exactly what we want. Wow, look at this, 5,421 records. I'm even like filtering it quite a bit. <laughs> I have 5K plus things to choose from. I love all you people so much. <sighs> That's a lot of rock and everything. Holy moly. <laughs> no, 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 no. There we go. All right. Stalags. I don't want that rock gurp. Let's see. Ooh, this is exactly the kind of stuff. Oh, AB didn't seem to have a lot of these. Or if they did, I just didn't find it. But this is stuff I wanted to eventually, like, put down there. Cool. These look nice. <laughs> Tyrone Bigham's moment, section eight. <laughs> All right, uh, da -da, rock VM. Okay, groups for optimization. Cool, just one mesh. Nice, cool, very good. Yeah, see, we have the hindsight of twenty some odd years of ruining frame rates. Now we we know better now. I need like a, I don't need a rock group. Uh, cool as these things seem, I don't need this just yet. Wow, cool. This must be like a regional cliff. Ooh, so this you could, we could like turn this sideways. I don't want exactly that color though. Like an Honest Hearts Zion Canyon feel here. Nope. Ooh. Chappelle Shrell stuff. The desert for the Narciss release, says Eltario. Ah, cool. Thank you for the context. Appreciate that. I don't think it would... I don't think it really fits here. Which I think for my fake lore that I'm making up, it's going to be like under... It's going to be like on the, you know, near Red Mountain. Um, so we're not going to find just random... Regional rocks here. That would be weird. But just for giggles, you know, let's look at these now, huh? What's that? A, hmm, okay. Must be a <laughs> our favorite. This is my favorite asset. <laughs> All right. Lost my place. Ooh, some Cyrodiil rocks. That's the amazing thing, is we're getting, you know, like three plus projects worth of rocks here. 
Hmm, I like these rocks. These Cyrodiil rocks are cool. Wow, it's huge. <laughs> Way too big. Whoa. All right. Look at that. Whew. That's like a big mountain cliff. Cool. Mountain peak. I got it. This I got to see. Poly heaven, right? Polygon. Triangle heaven. Look at this. Cool. Neat. Not what I need, though. Hmm. Another huge one. I don't think the Cyrodiil rocks are going to work here, though. It would be a break in consistency that I don't want to be responsible for. Okay. Room small. Just out of curiosity, though. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so you can build some cool Cyrodiil-looking caves here. I dig it. Not this time. Hmm. CNQ. Whoa. Okay. Must be more Cyrodiil stuff. Crazy. Yeah, you know, I haven't decided what I want to do with this busted out door here. I was thinking of having it go to like a big room, some kind of cave. Haven't figured that out yet. Just seemed like it's too good of an idea to not put that hole in the wall there. <laughs> TR Tear Rock. Thank you so much, Herdrex. I appreciate you. I'm just like a bum aimlessly. TR No good. Oh. Uh, too many commas. This is what happens. Alright, there we go. TR, tear, rock. Hmm. Doesn't seem to match that. Let's do just that. Hup. Whoops. <laughs> I fat fingered and I hit control Q accidentally. Yikes. My bad. There we go. <laughs> Whoops. So as I understand, and maybe um, Section 8 can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you can actually save. So like now I got to go through here and look, I got to like open up my cell and do all this again. And I think you can actually save your layouts. This is something I haven't dabbled in. Um, and again, Section 8. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can do this. Indeed. We should try to do it now. So let's see here. File. Okay. I thought there was something in here for layouts. Maybe I'm just making it up. Yeah, not seeing it. That would be kind of good, though. You know? Like, have my working on this mod layout where, you know, open up this cell and this query would be kind of nice. All right. Let's look for those rocks. Nothing matched. Saving record filters. Thank you, Section 8. That is what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Herdrex, if you feel like a non-caved-in ceiling, a TR in D hall ceiling, most definitely got you covered. Hmm, perhaps, I don't know if it would fit right against, the thing about that is, that's spicy, that's a little bit spicy, 
we got to turn the lights on here so you can see but um it's not like a perfectly flat ceiling and so chances of anything else lining up right are pretty slim that's why i just wanted to stuff a rock in there um yeah so you can see i'm overlapping here and it just looks like poop i don't like it it will be like clipping um there's like a little bit right here somebody could reasonably fly up here and see that gap you know um but thankfully yeah we can just chuck a rock in there i think so let's try this again Let's try this filter again. T rock. I will do that, Herjax. I will indulge you. Thank you. Gonzo has a great question that I'm going to read in just a moment. All right, here we go. So let's, uh, there we go. Ooh, interesting, okay. So what we're gonna do here, um, I'm gonna select this with a middle click. We've now selected the thing and I can move it around one of the thing neat things about open mwcs in the 0 0.49 builds is we have um reference snapping available to us what do i mean by that it means i can co-select if you would something else by holding shift and middle click which gives you that yellowish outline and now i can move this other thing that's outlined in white relative to the thing outlined in yellow. Um, and so let's just really quick. Yeah, so if I hold control, right click. Now I'm grid snapping this thing relative to the yellow thing. In this particular case, snapping isn't so important, right? I'm probably just gonna like eyeball it because it's gonna look like caved in or whatever. And Gonzo says, could you duplicate that ceiling piece and rotate it 180 degrees on the horizontal plane so that it lines up perfectly? Would that look too goofy? That's actually a decent idea. Um, we might try that after this, if this doesn't actually work out. Um, all right, we got to push it down just a little bit more. All right. Let's get in there. So, yeah, let's just pretend like the ceiling is filled in there, and this is what you would see kind of. I don't know. What do you think? It's not a bad idea, honestly. I personally, though, I think I want to rock there. Um, I guess the whoops, I punched my mic as I'm keen to do. I guess you could say like maybe some more modern structure was built on top and subsequently also buried and like sunk, you know, and we can like connect into a, like a Velothi interior. Um, Sophia, uh, looks pretty good. I'm okay. Hmm. If you replace the texture with the rock texture. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if I want to go down that rabbit hole, but that's an interesting idea. Um, I'm going to keep this thing here. What I'm going to do is this. And what I like to do when I'm trying to decide on a piece, I'll just like move that guy out of the way directly up. And let's try to get a rock in there. huh? Let's try and find another rock. I'm pretty set on it being a rock there, but I am open to putting this piece here and then having like the idea of having a Velothi structure buried and connected to the ruins as like a co-ruin. That'd be kind of neat. All right. Okay. Um... Oh, you know what? I removed the TR. Hold up. T underscore. Put that back in the mix. T 
T-shaft hole ceiling. Creative potential. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Caved in upper floor. Right? Because, like, this thing could have gotten buried and then, like, life went on for the Dunmer. A Velothi structure could reasonably be in the region where I kind of envision this thing. So let's see. T-shaft hole. I'm not seeing that. Shaft hole ceiling. Nada. Oh, O A A B. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. That's O A A B T. I'm not sure what I'm looking for. How about what did I do? Oh, there we go. Hmm. Any of these, what you're talking about, Herdrex? I'm not actually, not actually seeing that one. Though, it does seem like a nice piece. Whoa. I just broke the stream view. <laughs> clicked on OA, I clicked on OBS. By mistake, don't try this at home, folks, yikes. I did something. Oh, yeah. Did a couple undos. NIF files. Oh, no, no. So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Herdrax. I appreciate that. Um, so, if you want to recognize the NIF file names, you need to query on the model animation um, key. So, let's do that. Model animation. There we go. And so, I'm looking for shaft... Thank you, sir. Maybe we need that. Maybe we need the ID for that one. There we go. Okay. Throwing the Telvani in the mix now. Not against it. Looks like this one has the lit, potentially the lit uh, aware meshes. Yeah, I still feel like I want a rock. It needs to be a rock of some kind. Do I have a more? Yeah, okay. This, I think, is a narrower, but it needs to be more narrow. <clears throat> All right. Whoa. <laughs> That's huge. Holy moly. Would you look at that? Yeah, <laughs> Altario. Wish I could help out here some more, but I'm not an interior dev and I don't have the pieces memorized. Hey, it's all good. I appreciate it. <laughs> no worries. Um, it's actually honestly kind of fun. Part of the joy in this for me is... Um, discovering this kind of stuff, you know? I don't think that's exactly what I want, but I'm glad I found it. Mountain Peak. I have a feeling this is going to be huge, but I need to see it. Ooh, not exactly huge. Hmm. 
Like, okay. Hear me out. What if we do something like this? And something like this. Oh man, no, it's just too big. It's not going to work. Get rid of it. Well, I was thinking like point the pointy end down, you know, might look kind of cool, but maybe we can find a smaller one that's still pointy. And by the way, as I'm moving around here, I should note that um, I have actually set the um, the movement speed to be slightly slower than the default in the OpenMWCS because I find it's helpful to move really slow and look at things. And then if I hold shift, I, you know, get the really fast zooming going on there. So that's what's going on if you're wondering how I'm zipping around. Ooh, so this is a little bit more of a granity looking dirty rock. Uh, I don't know if that's quite the... I don't want to have regional. That's a regional rock. Looking at the ID, I can tell RR. Yeah, section eight, the default speed is def too high. Yeah, it's a <laughs> little bit. Maybe I'll talk to Atualpa about it. All right, Skyrim Cave. Yeah, we don't want any. Nord Barrow, though. Mm, nah, that's a little regional, I think. More regional, regional than I want to go. That can't have been all the TR rocks. Please. What was the... Anyways, before I forget, though, let's let's find the Steam Colossus, can we? Thank you so much. I was just going to ask. Appreciate it. Thank you, Altario. Was a very bad guess on my part. All right, let's just plop him in here. Does he even fit in this room? Definitely going in here. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> a little bit of an incentive for the player to not just start hitting buttons. Wow, nice. It works, honestly. I think it really works. So I think I might have, for this room, different levels of you goofed. And this would be like the worst case scenario as you activate this one. And he's just like, no, you gotta, you know, you gotta kill this one too. Uh, having trouble figuring out maybe where... Oh, so maybe one of the consoles will blow it up and then blow open the wall. Ooh, I'm getting ideas. Make sure we're not bumping into the wall there. We're very close, but we're not there. Yeah, it just looks so cool in the corner here. Okay. Before we end the stream for the day, I think that we need to actually go in the game and see how it looks. <laughs> Herdrax. OAAB data, TR data, exponential progression of retexturing meshes combination. My Morrowind lifestyle. I'm right with you, buddy. Gotta check if it fits in game. I think it might not fit when it stands upright, Altariel says. Ooh, that's good feedback. Okay, we'll go in game and I'll turn the AI on. Let's definitely see that. Um, going to be a little bit of a story spoiler for you. I'm going to jump right ahead to meeting uh, our friend who teleports us here. Whoa, I just did it again. My bad, folks. Jeez, i got to stop clicking on OBS. Just going to minimize it. All right, I'm going to save it. Mm, let's open my test script. Got the console commands to cheat myself to where I need to be to uh, 
get into the dungeon. Mm, I just like nighttime. Excuse me. And to that, further to that end, let's give some beautiful skies, shall we? All right. And here we go. Excuse me. Okay. And so, yeah, to uh, to st really start the meat of the mod, spoiler alert, you got to come here to the, uh, what do we call in this place? Telesero, I think. Anyways, normally Corwin and our guy here are inside, and you go in there, and they attack you, and that's the end of it. Um, but with my mod, um, you have Arendelle here. Let's actually make it daytime. Can't see squat. Let's say you got Arendelle here. And uh, under normal circumstances, if you've not properly gotten through the dialogue, uh, he's just going to tell you to GTFO. Who are you? You don't belong here. But. If you're far enough along in the story, you come and talk to him. And he auto-greets you. Hold up. What do you think you're doing here? And I'm just going to very quickly go through the dialogue. He teleports you over there. Boom, we're gone. Super dark in here. Uh, holy moly. <laughs> Let's turn the brightness up. I need to put more lights, obviously. I'm a guy who likes actually dark interiors, but, uh, you know, this is like, you can't see squat levels. Okay, this is a little bit better. Let's put it a little bit higher. Okay. Maybe a little higher. And so one of my intentions is uh, for our guy here, Arendil. As you progress through the dungeon, you can talk to him and ask him about your progress, and he might give you a hint about one of the puzzles or whatever. Um, you know, because I know um, sometimes some puzzles are obvious to me, maybe not to anybody else, so I thought it'd be cool to, like, have uh, uh, Arendil give you a hint. Yeah, Altariel. Corwin is the hostile enchanter master trainer. I think he's also used in Uvira's legacy quest, so you will need to make sure if there aren't any conflicts for the TO. Thank you. Yeah, I actually did notice that uh, using Delta plugin query uh, features, I did find that UL was the only other mod to touch Corwin. Um, so we're definitely going to have to test compatibility for sure. So anyways, yeah, you can uh, talk to Arendil and he can send you back. Um, you can ask him to travel together and there's some special dialogue I wrote for that. Ooh, okay. I'm not going to do it now. But yeah, so as I said, we just activate this console. You hear the sound of a wall moving in the other room and it played the sound. Maybe you heard that. Uh, let's turn the AI on. Yes, yes, Arendelle. And here it is. Hmm, maybe, I, oh, here we go. Yeah, it looks like maybe he does bump into the, maybe he does bump into the ceiling a little bit. We'll raise the roof. No problemo. I don't know. It's close. I think he fits. I think it... No, no. He's... Yeah. We got to maybe raise it up another level. <laughs> cool, though. Yeah, wow. So this is... <laughs> this is problematic. This is what I'm talking about, designers. I thought that this staircase was like a great idea. And now my giant robot's going to walk up it and ruin my whole design. It's... Vi yeah, it's just too close. I don't know if he's going to work in this room, actually. I don't want to raise the roof in here. That's so much work. Um, hey, you can see the garbage that I left in here, too, from testing out. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining today. I think we're about to close it up here. Um, thank you for the sneak peek at my mod, my brainchild, and I hope that uh, we can work on it more in future streams, and I hope you all will try it when I release it. And I hope it doesn't stink. I'm going to deploy the website a little bit later. Um, but yeah, again, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Um, thanks for showing off. Section 8 that says, uh, 
and yeah it's my pleasure as always um thank you for being here happy modding and uh if all goes well we'll see you tomorrow for another gameplay stream so i bid you good day all cheers